This thing. There's no conscience. Just hunger. The rider's going to come out. But when he does, he'll destroy whoever's got it coming. Welcome to the Marvel Cinematic University. I am your host, Professor Mario Rivera. And joining me is the marvelous doctoral student, Sly Cone MC, who has a bachelor's in the MCU, a master's in the multiverse, and is going for their dissertation in Marvel Studies. And there's a final quiz this week. I can't wait. Sly, how are you doing? You know, uh... We'll call this uh, midterms, I guess. <laughs> our our episode, our final final episode of season one. Very exciting. Uh, what a choice to end on. I know, right? Uh, that was definitely. I thought this is funny. We could have stopped actually during the last episode. We learned that this movie apparently came out in 2012. When we said that we were just doing the 2020 movies. Uh, but we might as well just get it over with, so that way we don't have to talk about it next time. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the problem with this movie is our sheet had it listed as 2009. That is correct. IMDb had it listed as 2011, and then Stars had it, it listed as 2012. So when did this movie actually come out? Nobody knows. I googled it. It said 2012, and I'm like, all right, that's the year I'm picking. I guess that's whatever Google says. So... <laughs> I, I didn't see this in theaters, so I have no fucking clue. But I'm going to say 2012 uh, is the release date for Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. That's right. We're doing the sequel to Ghost Rider, um, which a little bit of our first class here. History class is directed by Mark Neville Dean and Brian Taylor. You will know them for only two movies, the Crank series and Gamer and this. <laughs> So if you know what those movies look like, you probably know what this one looks like. They are very uh, similar in tone, that's for sure. Um, this is, of course, written by Scott M. Gimbel, Seth Hoffman, and our pal David S. Goyer, who is back at it again. Uh, this, of course, is a Columbia Studios picture, a.k.a. Sony Pictures, and it stars the one and only Nick Cage, Idris Elba, and Saran Hins, which I believe is the uh, Rourke character, correct? Am I correct on that? I believe Why are you that is. Me? You're the one who knows people. The, the only uh, the only actor with major lines, I guess. The bad guy. Uh, that is not that weird uh, pale dude with white hair. That was weird. Um, where can you stream this? Apparently, <laughs> stars. You can watch this on stars, or you could do what I did and pay too much on Amazon and rent it for two days. Um, so that way, I can go back and watch. Uh, probably the best scene that we have ever done. And I, I, I put that scene. That's the only scene I have right now in our drama section. And I want to perform the fuck out of it. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I'm very excited. I cannot wait. Uh, I'm going to try my best not to scream. Uh, very much like the electrious uh, Nicolas Cage. But I'm going to still try and have fun <laughs> with it. Um, and with that, let's get into the plot. Sly, you have the final honor, honor of this season to read us out. So let's see. <clears throat> oh, man. All right. Johnny Blaze, a man who made with a deal with the devil who calls himself Mephistopheles? Or Mephisto? At, at the time, now Rourke <laughs> is on the run, trying to make sure no one is harmed by his alter ego, the Ghost Rider. He is approached by a monk named Moreau. Okay, hold on. Yes. We're taking a tangent in this plot That's section. fine. That's fine. Uh, so, <laughs> so Idris Elba plays Moreau, which cracks me up because every time I hear Moreau, I think of Damien Moreau from Leverage, played by <laughs> the one and only Gord Vishek. <laughs> Jesus. How do we tie this back to fucking Electra? Oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> so Idris Elba yeah. tells him that he can help him be free of the writer, but first 
he needs Johnny's help to protect a boy whom Rourke has plans for to help him take human form? To help him. That's a sentence. To make him take human form. Thank you. <laughs> RCSO. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll use it. <laughs> RCS. 0411 at yahoo.com Were you born on April 11th is my question. <laughs> the only way to find out is actually email him. So we'll see. We'll see. Let us know. <laughs> don't email no, don't do that. random people. <laughs> Just because we write it because it's public record doesn't mean you should email them. Um, the comic book characters of course in this are Ghost Rider Rourke, which is Mephisto and Ray Kerrigan, which is uh, a dope name, a uh, character I'd never heard of. So that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about this movie now. Uh, of course, we're going to move on to our Stanley <laughs> seminar where we get to talk about what we think of the film and uh, all that. So, Sly, uh, you've 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 said you had some issues with this movie. What's going on? What's going on with this movie? I had so many issues with this movie. This is like the worst movie I've ever seen in terms of like me trying to watch something. Sure. Because there's not a steady shot in the entire movie. The entire thing is shaky cam. I get really bad motion sickness. On top of that, I have light induced migraines. So flashing lights. Mm -hmm. No bueno. 99.9% of this movie was either shaky cam, flashing lights, or shaky cam with flashing lights. I couldn't watch any of this movie. (laughs) Yeah, uh, this is definitely a big, like, counterpart for both Neville Dean and Brian Taylor. Like, this is what they do. They are, like, kinetic, in your face, um sort of with their camera style and yeah they could not put this on a dolly shot to save them <laughs> save their lives um i don't know if you've actually seen any of the behind the scenes of this movie but they literally like were on the back of like um motorcycles like the actual directors with the camera like fucking like going like this and like I'm not surprised it looks like it yeah. it shows there are some shots from like, oh, that looks cool, but it looks cool like a still frame, not sh- shaking around, you know? Like, there's some yeah. s- some things in there I'm like, oh, that's kind of effortful. That's kind of cool. But yeah, um, in terms of the plot, or the sequel to the movie that I think we mildly enjoyed, uh, what were your thoughts on the uh-huh. continuation of the Johnny Blaze story? I think I'm just... More of a Robbie Reyes person. And this is like no like criticism of Nick Cage and his performance, right? Like mm-hmm. I feel like he did a good job with what he was given. But there was just there's so little for me to connect with this character. And I really enjoy Ghost Rider in Adrian's of Shield, right? Yeah. Like I, I had fun with that. I just I feel like I wanted more reasons to care about him. No, I think that's absolutely fair. I mean, the only thing that his goal for this whole movie is just to, you know, rid himself of the writer, um, which even though the last movie was about accepting the writer. (laughs) So, uh, and who knows what happened to, of course, Eva Mendez's character, which um, a little trivia there, uh, Eva Mendez decided to not continue uh, her character onto this movie. Same thing with the actor that plays uh, Rourke slash Mephisto, Jane Fonda, uh, not Jane Fonda, uh, Peter Fonda. Peter Fonda <laughs> actually read the script and was like, no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Good for him. Good for him. And then he died peacefully. Uh, um, so he doesn't have to worry about this on his record. Um, so yeah, uh, overall, I agree. I just think that the overall plot is just sort of, it is what it is. It's the, you know, child that's sacred and you have to protect the child. I'm like, kind of, I'm kind of done. Mandalorian uh, sort of crossed that line with me. Uh, Logan's crossed that line with me. Freaking, um, whatchamacallit, uh, Boba Fett had something similar. Obi-Wan had something similar. 
a lot of Star Wars has been nothing but uh, boy and cub kind of stories. And uh, I'm just kind of sick of it at this point. So really, I was just like, oh, another one of those. He's the devil, but we have to, I don't know. I, I just did not find it fascinating. Or any I will say sort of that kid yeah. killed it. He does some good jobs in great, this. Great performance from the kid. Yeah, I'll give him that. There's some decent things that he does with uh, Nicolas Cage I thought was a lot of fun. Um, especially he says, like... Uh, so that was, like, the most compelling part. Mm -hmm. Every time you put Nick Cage with the kid, yeah. great, amazing, love that. If that was the whole movie, yes. I'd be right on board. I 100% agree. If the movie actually was just, like, we're going to focus on sort of, like, almost like a Terminator aspect of the story. Like, that's my favorite one so far of these sort of, like, these kids that we need to protect with our lives. Terminator's always been my favorite. I kind of would prefer to have been that, where it's just them trying to... He's gaining his humanity back by hanging out with his kid. And the kid is obviously, you know, the thing that the inside of him is also trying to stop as well in a lot of ways. Because he says that at one point where it's like, hey, it's between, you know, the writer. The writer's going to get you. You need to go away. He tells the mom to go away. And she's like, no, I need you to save my son. Um, and so that's an interesting story that I just don't think they play enough with. Instead, we do get really cool, I would say, some visual effects things when it's not swirling around like crazy. Um, you know, like I thought that him turning the giant's rig in this, in the scene where they're in that sort of cavern place and turning into a ghost rider version of it. I like, that's kind of cool. The fact that he oh, has the that, truck, the truck too, the truck, yeah. the fire truck, like these, that's the cool, cool. Like the, Oh, so you're not just the rider. You're the rider. Anything you touch uh -huh. turns into yeah. a thing. And that reminded me of the, the last one too. Cause the last ghost rider person like had a horse. And I was like, oh, can you just mm -hmm. turn a horse yeah. <laughs> into a rider? Like, that's cool, too. The horse was the OG rider, right? That's like, right. That's yeah. So, so cool. Yeah. So I thought that was kind of fun of how different way you could escalate that. Like, I would love, obviously, not a sequel to this, but like in the MCU, it's like he lands on a plane. Well, now the fuck it's a Ghost Rider plane. <laughs> you know, like I would love to see that. That would yeah. be really kind of cool. I would love to know your thoughts mm -hmm. on like this cinematography and like the stylistic pieces it's because there was like the like arty hand-drawn like montages true. that happened a couple times we are a fan of mixed media i do love that um i do think that it was interesting it for it to being in this movie and you know what you know what you know what this movie feels the closest to it actually feels closer to uh punisher warzone which, if I'm not mistaken, was actually the same branch mm. of, like, Marvel Knights. Kind of like, it's not your typical Marvel movie kind of thing. Except this was PG-13, so mm -hmm. I don't I don't think they pushed it too far. Um, but just in terms of the way that the movie is made and shot, like, how they, they sort of, like, put up these, like, action directors or, like, Lexi Alexander is another an action director and just, like, hey, or, or um stunt coordinators and it's like all right you try directing a movie and see what we can do i think they did a better job in the movie crank personally um where they literally crank up the frame rate in the camera um gamer i just i, I just that just just sounds bad i didn't want to try it but this is my the second <laughs> their, their version of ghost rider i don't know it just feels like I think I preferred the less grounded -y version of this and more of the cartooniness of the last one. Like him going up the building, like mm -hmm. that to me looked so cool. And that gra those graphics are theoretically dated in comparison to this. But like, I don't know, something about that look definitely spoke to me more than the gritty version of like, now the skull looks like it's all burnt up and like his clothes are all charred. I will say... Mm -hmm the jacket bubbling effect that was cool was so cool that was cool yeah no i love that too that was the best part that was my highlight even when um nicholas cage is like returning back but he still has the jacket you can still see it bubbling i was like little that is no oh, i saw that detail i was like that is sick and that is a cool little like little additional like effort that went into the design um, but overall, I, I, I think I prefer the original design. This does look good. I'm not going to say it's bad. Um, I just think that, you know, I just, I don't know. It, mm -hmm. Not my look, personally. That's what I'd probably say in terms of the way the movie looks, even the costuming, the bad guys. Even the bad guy looks really fucking silly, in my opinion. Um, Kerrigan's outfit yeah before he got zombified yes i kind of dug sure i it's it was the shoulder holsters i'll admit that 
I'm a big fan of the Soldier Holster. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. But. <laughs> no, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> no, I. Uh... <laughs> um, <laughs> I think my biggest problem mm-hmm. with this movie is I was so easily distracted by everything thing else happening in it that i like i couldn't tell you the plot yeah. like i you know i could tell you that um i spent most of the first half of this uh just dr- trying to read the romanian on the buildings <laughs> like that was also on that note yeah i seriously questioned watching this the Roma people and Romanians are two very separate groups. Mm-hmm. And I don't think the writers knew that. Because <laughs> there were so me. many comments about her being like Roma. And they were in Romania. <laughs> and those are two separate. very <laughs> different ethnic groups <laughs> from very different areas in the world. And I just... So I was distracted by that for half the movie. <laughs> it's fine. And like, and then the other half, they were in Turkey. Yes. And I was trying to think, like, Turkey and Romania, not bordering, right? <laughs> and so I looked up the the distance between the two sets. Yeah. Uh, locations. They're like 19 hours apart. <laughs> and he drove that kid there, like, overnight. Like, What? <laughs> So, like, Knocked I up, was I so distracted by the random details that, like, the story was, like, couldn't tell you. No idea what happened with the story. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little weird. It's just sort of like uh, Monroe meets uh, Johnny Blaze, tells him about this thing. The thing with the kid happens, obviously, in the like, opening of the movie. Um, once that starts, he fails to get the kid once, gets him the second time. And then the bad guy, no, he delivers them. That's right. That's, uh-huh. that's, and then the movie's over. But no, you actually have like 40 more minutes. And it's just these <laughs> weird monks. And, you know, it's, it's Nicholas Cage screaming in a hallway, <laughs> just like, I'm cured. I'm cured. That's the other thing. Yeah. What the fuck's the order? Yeah. They never, they just called them the order mm-hmm. and they just never explained it. And no. they were like chanting in Latin and they were doing all these rituals. <laughs> they were chanting in Latin. And at the very <laughs> end, there was like the the ominous like swaying. Yeah. Where like they were swaying and then yeah. the audience was like yeah. swaying back and forth. And I'm just like, what, what, right. what are we doing here? I guess. Yeah, <laughs> they're just like fuck it. We have a ghostwriter, and he kills people with a whip. Oh, Lord! And then a guy who melts people—that was fun. Let's see here. Wait, wasn't that a character in the last one? Wasn't there someone that melt people? I don't remember. I do not remember the last movie well enough. That's fair. If you if you know what we're talking about, write into the MC University Gmail dot com. I think that's our email. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just I agree with you that I think there's just not a lot going on with this character. I think there can be a good version of Johnny Blaze, but with all everything that I gotten out of the MCU so far, with of course uh, Robbie Reyes, I think he's more compelling in a lot of ways. He has a lot of things going on in his life Mm -hmm. that he wants to protect and lose. And so I think that's a more interesting character in this one. It was like, I had a lost love. And then at the end of the movie, she apparently went away. I don't know. We don't know. We don't know anything that happened because you don't talk about her at all in this movie. So I have no idea what's happening other than you left everything behind. Um, So, yeah. And also you shouldn't have killed that one guy because he was awesome. That uh, his buddy that just randomly evaporates. That was a weird scene. Um, I love that movie. I keep making fun of it. I love that one. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Definitely a weird showing. And I also think uh, Mesopheles, uh, or Rourke, just not that interesting either. Like, he just became one note. The only joke that made me laugh was he apparently was uh, <laughs> Vlad the Impaler, Hitler, and then he was also Jerry Springer at one point. Apparently, th- those were all the devil. It's like, okay. All right. There we go. A Dracula. I will yeah. say, one of my favorite moments. I, I, 
three favorite moments. Okay. All right. Third is um, when uh, Moreau is like running up the whatever mm-hmm. and just goes, Merd. And that cracks me up because I know it's French and I, I, I get that. Yeah. But for all of my former dancers out there, <laughs> you'll know that, you know, the theater tradition of saying break a leg instead yes. of good luck. Yes. The the dancer, specifically the ballet trans, uh, tradition is saying merd to each oh, other really? before as like a good luck. Mm-hmm. It means like shit in French. Gotcha. But I was like, ah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> shit. <laughs> Number two mm-hmm. was Nick Cage going good girl to that dude. <laughs> that made me giggle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, I love Nicolas I Cage. Like, I see you. Nicolas Cage is oh, so good. So goddamn good. Oh but boy. Yeah. My my overall favorite I keep I said that about like three things now. But you like, like this movie. one of my Just admit highlights. It. Just admit it. You like this I movie. I did not. I could not watch <laughs> this movie. Um but the scene where Nadia throws the knife and pulls out the gun. So yeah. smooth. So well done. Yeah. That was I was like, ah, very impressive. That was pretty Nadia impressive. was great for the like five minutes she was in this movie. That is true. I don't even remember she had any lines. I actually have no clue. I can't tell you. I wouldn't be able to tell you. The only fe- <laughs> All of them were about her son. The the only female in this movie is trying to find her son. Always yeah, I don't that talks to a single woman. So yeah, it just fails the Bechdel test, clearly. Um yeah. Uh, aggressively aggressively uh yeah i get i don't really have that much to say other than i just wish that it you know with, with it being a nicholas cage led uh superhero movie i just wish there was more i just honestly wish there was more um i would cut out a lot of the rourke stuff i just don't care just have just have johnny blaze on the screen at all times i don't know the fucking monks were so stupid give me nick cage with the kid for that's fine. It was 95 minutes. It felt. Which I think is just ridiculous. Yeah. Because if you're that close, you might as well make it a tight 90. <laughs> <laughs> you're telling me you couldn't trim five minutes out of this movie? How How about, ridiculous. How about the two times that we watch uh, Ghost Rider take a piss? <laughs> like, we see it twice. And I'm like... Also... The opening recap yeah. dragged on forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I get it. I saw the previous movie. Mm-hmm. I know what's going on. Yeah. It's like, but we got to show with the new the new Rourke. So we got to show it over again. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, does this movie hold up? And is it still worth watching? Absolutely not. Yeah, I, I cannot skippable. recommend this movie to anyone in good conscience. It's just like it's so unwatchable. And like I know not everybody's as sensitive to motion mm-hmm. as I am. And I know not everybody's as sensitive to flashing lights. But it's just constant. The entire film. Yeah. Not just transformations, but also during bike ridings and casual conversations and anybody moving fast. They're constantly just being jittered around by something. So, yeah, I agree. I don't think this uh, film is worth A, the plot's not that interesting to watch. And B, it's not a very good sequel to a movie that I thought was actually pretty fun. So I think that overall, yeah, yeah, I would rather be more silly then try to do a realistic, like, grounded, gritty take, especially if you're not going to go full bore with it. So, yeah, that's just my thoughts. Mm-hmm. And how, how do you not have the Ghost Rider piss on somebody? You had that, you show it twice. It doesn't actually piss on anything. All right? Next movie, you better do it. <laughs> but this movie has a pretty great scene, and I want to reenact it for drama class. Uh, this is the only one I put on there only because I think it's the only scene really worth anything. And it's all in uh, Nicolas Cage's performance. So I'm going to try my best to recreate it. So I'm going to be Johnny Blaze. You can be va- I don't even know this character. That's the thing. Usually I write down like 
at least like three or four quotes yes. from a movie, right? Like things that made me laugh or what I had a single quote. <laughs> <laughs> so So you know. That doesn't tell you what you need to know. Exactly. All right. You ready for this? Yes, I'm gonna try to make this TikTok worthy, so <clears throat> I got what you need for the shakes, my friend. Kerrigan must have told you about that thing that killed his men last night. Yeah, that thing is inside of me. You see, you're the bad man. And this thing, the rider, he feeds on bad men. And he's hungry. And he's hungrier than he's been in years. And that's why I'm shaking. Because right now, the only thing standing between me and you and the rider is me. <laughs> And he's just, he's just scraping at the door, <laughs> scraping at the door. And I don't tell you what I want to know. I'm going to let him out. And when he's done with you, there won't be anything left. You understand? <laughs> and see. <laughs> scraping at the door. Oh, so. He just goes so high on that. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> It's such a like, oh my god! Um, I don't. Do you, you you haven't seen um um mass? Oh my god! What is it? The unbearable weight of massive talent yet? Have you? The Pedro Pascal Nicholas Cage movie. I encourage you to watch the movie only because uh, <laughs> Nicholas Cage gives a very similar um speech that I think is from the movie Chinatown, and it's just him going, you know. Before you pull the trigger, like he just has like that, like he's ready to say like one specific word to make it pop, and it's so good, so good. So please, definitely check that movie out for sure. <laughs> the way he does like controlled unhinged, yes, is just unparalleled. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! So we go ahead and we move from drama class. We're gonna get ahead into music room, which of course super movie superhero movies. Of this era, remembered for their original soundtrack. Does the movie, uh, damn it, does the music in this movie hold up or have any songs that are still bangers today? Now, there's a lot of like, how would you describe it? Like Euro trash music? I don't, I don't know. I just, a lot of rock. European pop. European pop, European rock. I don't know. It's just very, just sort of like grungy. The soundtrack is also that. However, there is the one scene where it's the scene that where I just did the drama class and he transforms into the the writer. Um, it plays the song Turn It Out by Death From Above, 1979. Death From Above is an amazing band. Um, and when I heard, uh, when I was like, wait a minute, no way, it's that song. And then I was like, I'm blown away. So definitely check it out. Turn It Out by Death From Above. They're a awesome uh, rock pop band and very, very um, grungy and bassy. Say. From the score, mm -hmm. one of the end songs is called Send the Devil Back to Hell, and it's during the like uh, sending of a back to hell scene. Yeah, yeah. And that song's fucking slapped. <laughs> <laughs> that was composed so well. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Well, I guess we're already moving straight on into quiz time, which, of course, quiz time or quiz time. I had to do it one more time before the season's over, uh, where I ask Sly some questions and uh, see how many points they get for the episode. Uh, so a lot of these are going to be basic true or false questions. Some of them are going to be simple. Some of them are not. The, my favorite question is the last one. But we're going to start with is Stanley in this movie? Uh, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think to check. <laughs> I'm gonna be real honest. I, uh, I'm gonna go with no. I'm gonna say I have no idea. I'm gonna say no too, and I'm not looking it up. So I s did not see Stan Lee in this movie, as far as I'm concerned. So <laughs> I'm gonna give you a point for that. Uh, next question is true or false? Nick Cage wore skull makeup while playing Ghost Rider in scenes. Does he sound like someone I, that would do that? I don't think he would need to, <laughs> but I could kind of see him doing it, if I'm going to be honest. Are we going to be honest? I can imagine Nick Cage oh. being the person. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Um, all right. So your answer is yes or true? Uh, I could see it. Sure. Yeah, sure. That's true. The answer is true. Um, I'm trying to see if I can figure a way to DM you this information. I don't think I can, but there is a photo. Oh, you know, I can put it in the doc. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot boy. Give me one second. <laughs> I'll put it right in the doc here. Um, so, oh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and put it right here. So, yeah, he decided to dress up like one of the bad guys from, <laughs> uh, I think it's uh, not Die Another Day, but it's one of the James Bond movies from a way back. Um, but they're sort of like, it's very stereotypical that yeah that you see what i'm seeing you see yeah you see that yeah yeah i'll oh, yeah i'll pr- try to remember to, the show the audience if not i'll have a, a description you can click the image but he's supposedly dressed like that <laughs> during the scene where he gets his head replacement nice. so he had the body of i guess d- yeah but he had the face of that and he apparently spooked people because <laughs> they, they had no idea he was gonna do that um <laughs> so there Iconic. it is Yep. Uh, if if the, for the audience, if, not, if I didn't put the image up, imagine the lead singer of the band in Hocus Pocus. There you go. I just did it for you. Um, let's see. All right. So you got two answers right so far. The next question is true or false. This is the last time the team of Mark Neville Dean and Brian Taylor worked together on a project. Is that true or false? Okay. You said they made a project called the gamer. Yes. That sounds like something that would have came out more recently than 2011. So I'm going to say it's not the last time they worked on something together. All right. Well, turns out Gamer came out in 2009, which is the year we thought this movie came out. Uh (laughs) <laughs> which would mean that yes it is true this is the last time the team worked together they basically said fuck it we're not making movies anymore because uh we're not doing this this killed their career together yeah they're just like you're not cool you're not cool all right bye and then now we have two separate directors doing their own things i actually didn't look up to see what they did afterwards i think they went to television for the most part um <laughs> Because, yeah, they haven't had... Because they were, like, from the dudes that brought you crank. Like, this was, like, their thing. Um, Sadly, not anymore. Okay. (laughs) My favorite question is... How many David S. Goyer films have we covered during season one of this show? Remember now, David S. Goyer is someone I pointed out a few times because he went from writing to directing. And he's also written a bunch of DC stuff. How many times did we cover during this show? I know it was during one of the series. Blade? Was it Blade? I think it was Blade. Right, I'll add Blade to your so, list. So I, I, I'm going to count the three Blades. Okay. And the two ghost riders you know, so echo? five sand five final answer okay he, yeah actually you know what let me double check because that's a good point maybe maybe if i because i looked at the last doc for ghost rider and i didn't see the name so that's why i'm double checking right now making sure that he is in fact not uh associated with this project I'm just stalling for you lovely people, lovely audience. No, the screenplay was written strictly by Mark Stephen Johnson. So I'll, I'll I'll say not this one, but you're going to still say Three Blades and then at least this one, right? That's, yeah. All right. The answer is you're absolutely correct. It was the Three Blades and it was this one. He did four movies out of all the movies that we've done thus far. Hmm. Yes. He did actually wow. write one more that we didn't cover. I have a correction for you. Oh, no. Yes. He was executive producer on Ghost Rider 2007. That counts. All right. That counts. All right. That's five. You did it. You got you got the I'm... secret. You got the secret one. <laughs> so we got five. Um, <laughs> the other things that obviously we didn't cover so far is we didn't do the Blade TV show because like we said, we're not maybe not going to do it. Um, he also wrote something that might be a part of our um, 
old before series. He wrote a Nick Fury movie in the 90s for David Hasselhoff to play Nick Fury. So he, he wrote that one. All right. Yeah, David Hasselhoff has played Nick Fury in a TV movie. <laughs> so if we could find that on wow. line somehow, we may review it in the future. You never know. Um, in the meantime, let's see here. You've gotten, okay, so you've gotten three out of the four, so you basically passed the grade, all right? You passed. I even asked a question that obviously had a little history with the show so far. I should start keeping data like that so, so I could throw, throw in that in there. It's like, how many times has this person been mentioned on the show? <laughs> how many times have we said um, funny things about the timeline? Um, okay. Gordon Vishnick. <laughs> Gordon Vish, yes. He's like right up there. He's the top, if not. If not the top. David S. Goyer, probably in the middle. Um, <laughs> and that's it, pretty much. Uh, this is We're going straight to Homeroom and have some our final thoughts on the film. Sly, go ahead. What were your final thoughts on Ghost Rider, Spirit of Vengeance? Uh, my final thoughts is, I feel like this has been a very quick episode it has been. for us. And our last, uh, our shortest episode to date mm. was... Punisher. Oh yeah. Damn it. Is that correct? Which was the worst movie we've done on here. <laughs> Does this rank above or below Punisher? Oh my god. No, this definitely beats Punisher. I'm sorry. Like by a, I would rather I think it's low for me. Really, I could actually, really look at Hold the on. screen. Let's have a Punisher. twenty minute conversation as to why you think so because. I don't think I could watch a whole family get murdered again. You know, like that happened in that movie. <laughs> I could physically watch all of Punisher. Oh, I man. was physically capable yeah. of watching Punisher. And I was not physically capable of watching this movie. God. And that's the only reason. Like every other reason it ranks above. There's like a but hate. the fact that I could legitimately like had to cover my eyes yeah for a vast majority of this movie that says i it was just unwatchable that says a lot because there's a hate crime in that movie <laughs> and the movie's yeah rough. yeah it does <laughs> so just like if that's tolerable i'm not saying i condone <laughs> no of course not i'm not saying i support or enjoyed <laughs> but I could physically watch it, which is apparently the new bar. Got it. For the show. Got it. If you could physically watch watch the actual movie, <laughs> then you know what? You have a uh, you, you certain you pass certain tests. So Yeah, I mean content content wise, I don't know. There are things there are there are things that I can say that are um re not redeemable, what I'm trying to say. Like there are things that are likable. In the Punisher, like I like the dynamic of the actual like friends that he gets at the end. Like I like them; they are nothing, you know. Rebecca Romaine just falls in love with them. <laughs> like it just that just happens. I don't know. That's a choice. Yeah, I don't know, but I think I would most likely put on this than I would put on that on, the, especially in the background. And I own it on 4K Blu-ray, <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I can't believe, oh, man. All right. Fair there we go. If I ever get a TV, I'm just going to have just nonstop crappy movies and it's going to be the Punisher like a thousand times. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to get a third Jupiter Sending on there. Well, that's a good movie. I don't care what anybody says. I love I Jupiter Sending. I love Jupiter Sending. Anything, anything the Wachowskis <laughs> do. Movie. I still got to watch Cloud Atlas. The Wachowskis are now we really are just patting this out. Just talking about all the shit. <laughs> 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 all right. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> let's actually wrap this up uh <laughs> so no don't watch this um our homework is well hey we're going a little bit of a break but by the time we come back it will of course be to our next x-men movie which begins the next part of the timeline uh of course it is x-men first class which did you see i created a real ass graphic now for that so I will update that over time. I already got the notes in, notes in already for first class already in there. I just got to hide them. Um, and uh, we're not necessarily, sh we said like a month or so, of, you know, how long it'll be, but we'll, we'll promise it won't be that too long. If, if they're still up to date. We'll be back on the 17th of August. Okay. Wait. No, wait. That's I this one. First 
Yeah. Okay. It's fun. All right. Then in a couple weeks, then that's fine. We'll try and bank a few. <laughs> Maybe by September. Just just keep it a floating idea. Just keep an idea. But anyways, uh, where, of course, they can find you until then, because you'll be being doing stuff all the time. Oh, yeah. You can find me Thursday nights live on TikTok at SlickLenMC. You can find me on the Point in Progress podcast. And you can find me live every Saturday night at We'll Throw the After Party at After Party Show everywhere. And then, of course, you can find me over at the Twitters at THT Mario Rivera, where you see a lot of my posts. But, of course, you're always going to find me here at the MC University Pop, uh, the PIP podcast, but also Model Citizens podcast, all available at Point in Progress on YouTube. Please subscribe, comment on our stuff, enjoy some of the bits. Hopefully, we'll have some shorter content out there soon. But until we come back for class, I mean, uh, class dismissed, go, go to midterms, go on spring break, whatever it is. Class is dismissed. <laughs>